Greetings and welcome to Pinball Help. Mike here. Work continues on this Stern Trident pinball machine and what I'm doing here is I'm going to be replacing the old power supply with a new more modern power supply and I'm going to go over the process of what I'm doing here and uh, what's all is involved. So this is a, this is a the power supply by a company called X-Pin um, this one is a bit different than some of the others. This one is billed as one of the more easier ones to be able to replace because you don't really necessarily have to do any soldering. Um, let's let's look at the the base power supply in these um, Bally and Stern games. What you've got is you've got the transformer back there, and you've got wires coming off the transformer. So the transformer takes the AC from the line voltage and converts it into various other voltages you know, for the coils, for logic, for all of that. So five volts will be coming off of that, and six and a half, and, and this or that, you know, for the different coils and stuff. So it goes to this board, and this is a rectifier board that converts the uh, AC into DC on the appropriate circuit lines that it needs. Now, the way these things were often designed in most of these games were the the leads coming off of the transformer were soldered directly onto the back of the power supply board. It was a real pain in the butt. It probably made the game a bit more reliable because that was one less connection that could become flaky, but it's a real pain in the butt to service because the wires are literally soldered onto the board. So in this case, I had to cut the wires off, and we will be replacing the entire board with a new board. And this one, instead of soldering, having solder points, it has these push-in uh, terminals where you can strip the wires and you can push them in and and, uh, and have them connect to the board this way. So we're going to try this. We're going to see how well this works. This has heat sinks on the um, bridge rectifiers already, so it doesn't necessarily have to be screwed to this back plane, which was used as a heat sink for these earlier models. You can see they, had, they would actually screw them to the, the plane, although... Yeah, I don't know if this one was done properly or not. These things would usually be not flush against the uh, the board. So there was, there's, there's definitely a number of issues with this board. It looks like it's had some really kind of sloppy soldering work on here and everything. And this uh, MOV here, I think, is crunchy too. Uh, so I turned the game on. I, I couldn't get any voltage. Uh, but I'm going to take it, take advantage of this opportunity, and we're going to swap the whole board out. So this is what we're going to do. So I've cut the leads off, and everything is color coded. But I did take pictures of where everything is, and I left a little bit of the original wire on there, so that if I have problems knowing which line is which, I can refer to the schematics for this board and know what the points are for the different voltages coming off of the transformer. But this comes with a little key here that shows you the color of the wires and where they go, E1 to E12. So there's 12 wires coming off of that thing. So that's what I'm going to be doing, is I'm going to go through these wires. And they, they kind of made a mess here. Let me show you what, what's up with this. They, um, they tacked wires onto wires, so it's a little bit of a mess. I'm going to untangle this whole thing and see if there's enough, if it's, if it's long enough to where I don't even need to use these extra wires. So I'm going to be paying close attention to that to see if this thing um, will, is long enough and I don't have to do it. But they had, they had wires attached to wires. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to undo all of this and I'm going to see if I can connect these things into the push terminals without having to extend the wires. If I have to extend the wires, then what I'll do is I'll get some extra wire and um, I'll do this the right way. Instead of just twisting them together and putting some uh, electrical tape, I will twist them together and put some heat shrink tubing over them so it'll be a really nice, uh, good quality extension. Um, alternatively, what I could do is I could pin these and put them in a connector and have a detachable connector. Um, I don't know if I've got all the parts to do that here. I don't want to necessarily create another point of failure if I don't have to. So for right now, I am just going to untangle this mess, take a look and see if I can use the existing wires the way they left them or they're too short, and then we'll get them hooked into this board and we're going to see how well that works. I also have to check a few connectors here 
Um, I think there's a there's a wire or two that's broken on one of these connectors that I'll have to uh, figure out. And uh, that's where we're at right now. So we're going to try this new power supply. Stay tuned to the next video, and I'll give you another update on uh, my progress with it. And, uh, you know, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for helping out. Be sure to subscribe on my YouTube channel, YouTube slash Pinball Help. And click on the subscribe, and there's a little bell. You can be notified when I have more videos. And until next time, thanks for watching.